Welcome to the 41st Java tutorial. Today we're finally going to look at GUIs and we've all heard of those. Now if you're going to be building a business application or a game, you're eventually going to need a graphical user interface. And so over the next several tutorials we're going to be going over setting up a GUI. Now in this tutorial we're going to set up a window pane and then I'll show you how to add a button to that window pane. And we'll be using Java Swing. Now there's also Java FX. We'll get into that later on. Right now Java Swing is kind of the mainstream default Java GUI toolkit to use. But it really doesn't matter which you use. The basic concepts are the same. You have to set up user events and action listeners. And that we'll be getting into in a few videos. And so of course we need a window. And it is the J frame. You see that right here. We're going to create an object. That is what the window will be. And then you can see right here we're going to create a button. And again, they're both objects. We create an object for our window, which is the J-frame. And then we create a button to add to that window or inside the window. And you'll notice that when we fire this off, it looks like a normal window that you would see in any Windows app. Uh, you can minimize it, maximize it, close the window, all those types of things. And so the first thing we want to do is use the import feature and we want to import Java Swing. And you want to type this out if you're following along here exactly like this. We don't want to put a star in front of the swing because we only want to import the Java Swing classes because that will add a lot of unnecessary overhead if you add all the Java X classes. We don't want that. And so what does this do? It gives us access again to all the Java Swing classes. And that's what this is, this JFrame class. That's what we're going to be building our object off of. So we don't have to create the class. It's a class that's already there, and we can tune it the way we want to use it in our application. And here's the object name we gave it, which was Frame. And it's just like we've been doing all along. We've been creating new objects, no difference. The only difference is we're going against a class that's already been created for us. And so we don't have to create that window. So again, this will create the JFrame or window or window pane, whatever you want to call it. And then we need to add stuff to it, right? And we're going to add a button. And we're going to use the J button class for that that's in Swing as well. So it's all there. It's all ready to go. And we're going to create a new object. In the constructor, we're going to actually create a title for it, which will be called Submit. That's text, as you can see. So it'll be a Submit button. Now, in a few videos, I'll teach you how to actually create a user event with this to trigger a user event. And then it's just like we've been doing all along. Once we have our object created, our JFrame object, we can go ahead and use it. So, you know, if we type in frame here, we can go ahead and use all the methods that are associated with that. And it says, please wait, because there's a lot of them. And you can see all of these methods now we can use. These have already been created for us. And you could go in here and look all of these up and see what they do. And we'll get rid of that. So we're going to be using uh, a few methods here to start out with the set default close operation method. Now, basically what this does is once you close out of the window, the program will stop. If you don't have this, actually it'll keep running. How does it know? So you need this exit on close parameter. And this actually adds the button. So we're going to add the button. Now you might be wondering, well, why are, why don't we do J button dot? Well, because we're adding this button to our J frame. So we need to actually use the frame object to add the button object. The button is an object within the frame object. So we're using the add method to do that. And then we're going to set the size of the window. You guys can play around with this. Um, I believe this is the width and this is the height. Now, if you're not certain, you can always right click on these methods, navigate to the source, and it'll take you to the actual class that we're using. And here you can see right here, it says it right here for us. Set size, it's width and height, and they are int values. So that's very useful. You can always drill down into these classes to see what they're doing. And they have some nice notes. Sometimes these make sense, sometimes they do not make sense. There you go with that. Okay, and then we're gonna set visible to true. That's another method. Now, if we don't do this, we won't actually see our window. So that's another thing that needs to be done. You need to set it to visible. And so let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we got our very first window here and we've got our nice little submit button. And you know, we're clicking on it, nothing's happened. We're gonna get to that in another video, but you can click on it, nothing's gonna happen, of course, but that's what we've got. You can move it around, you can minimize it, you can maximize it just like any normal window in Windows. Now you might be asking, how do I center this? Because if you'll notice, let's run this again actually. And you'll notice the window is situated on the top left corner. How do you actually get that to center? And there's actually a method for that, and I will show you that right now. 
and then we can do our usual frame dot we'll use our object and get all the methods for the J frame and I believe it's set location relative to I believe this see there's a lot of these methods here this is it right here and we're gonna set this to null and now let's go ahead and run this again and it should go in the center hopefully and there you can see the window is in the center okay that is going to do it for this video in the next several videos again as I said we'll be setting up action listeners responding to user events and doing all sorts of things with GUIs see you guys in the next video